Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. My name is Dr. Leslie Phillips, and I am your host for this evening's show. And uh, welcome, everyone. If you're a regular listener, then you know the drill. But if this is the first time that you've been tuning into the show, let me just give you a little bit of information. This is a talk show. It is a call-in show. And every week we have a different theme that we talk about, which you're welcome to call in. Now, in general, Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie is a show that focuses on anything to do with spirituality, metaphysics, developing your intuition, even the mystical, the paranormal and the supernatural. So we always choose a subject that we talk about that's in that vein. And actually, you're welcome to write to us and suggest some topics for us. And if you want to do that, you can write to info at drlesliephillips.com. And you spell my name D-R-L-E-S-L-E-Y-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S dot com. So we've covered lots of topics over the months on the show and I was thinking about it tonight and you know most of what we've talked about has been to do with intuitive abilities things like or things like past lives or spirit guides and so but when we first started the show series we also wanted to delve into sometimes something a bit more mystical or supernatural and so I thought we could do that this evening and uh I uh, I actually wanted to talk about mythological creatures. <laughs> and I'll tell you what prompted me to come up with that idea. Um, and I actually thought we could focus on dragons today. And uh, I was, over the weekend, I was at a reading fair, Spring Equinox Reading Fair. And I had one of my regular clients pop in to see me. And she said to me, Dr. Leslie, I have got a new spirit guide and this new spirit guide has been following me around everywhere. And I want you to take a look and let me know what they're wanting to tell me. And she was quite aware that her spirit guide was a dragon. She said, it's a dragon. (laughs) I've got this dragon following me around. And so I went into my altered state of consciousness so that I could tune into non-ordinary reality and there was a dragon standing behind her (laughs) and so so over the weekend I was having a nice conversation with a dragon and I I saw I thought I'd share some of what the this dragon was talking about and it was quite fascinating and it sort of had me thinking about dragons in general and um you know, dragons through the ages and through history and in popular culture and what they stand for. So my client's dragon didn't have a name. I didn't ask it, actually. But what it seemed to be was a creature that had an enormous amount of information about certain particular subjects. So it was wanting to communicate to my client about kundalini energy. And for those of you who don't know who have never heard of kundalini energy, let me just take a step back and explain it. So there's different types of kundalini energy. There is a channel where you run your own or you can run your own kundalini energy and it runs up your spine from the base of your spine and all the way up. And for spiritual adepts who learn to consciously run their kundalini energy, they they use it for transforming themselves. So it has huge transformative power. 
anything that gets in its wake is, um, you know, that is non-beneficial to the person who's running it, then it is it is burnt away. Rather like the idea of a dragon's breath, you know, the fire from the dragon's mouth dissolving things. The kundalini energy will do that for you. And so it's something that's very useful in helping people with their spiritual growth. But you have to work your way up to knowing how to use it and being able to use it safely. Anyway, this dragon, it seemed, was an expert in kundalini energy. And in particular, it was an expert in the kundalini energy of the earth. So I just explained that you have kundalini energy and a a, a channel for running that in your body. The planet itself also has a form of kundalini energy. And to us, it's visible when there are massive natural disasters. So, for example, if you think about earthquakes or volcanoes or even hot springs, all of those hot, fiery, transformative earth changes, that's actually an expression of the earth's kundalini energy. And when those things occur, it results in massive transformation. You know, the landscape of the planet can be transformed. Um, Whole regions can be... New regions can be formed. Old regions can disappear. Um, Many creatures can lose their lives in a big natural disaster. So it's a huge transformational experience that occurs on the planet. Now, my client's dragon (laughs) was wanting to teach her how to consciously run the Earth's kundalini energy through her system. So remember I I, I mentioned that you have a central channel where you can run your own kundalini energy. Um, There are also subsidiary channels that you can run the Earth's kundalini energy through. And so this dragon was um, wanting to... um, teach my client how to do that and by the way one thing that just occurred to me is you know the kundalini energy is often called like serpent fire and it is um when it's not activated it's often visualized or envisioned to be like a serpent which is coiled at the base of the spine And a kundalini awakening is when that serpent, that coil of energy, unravels itself and starts to flow up the spine. So there's kind of a relationship between serpent power or the dragon and kundalini. And so I, you know, when I continued talking to this dragon that had chosen my client to latch on to and befriend, um, some of the other wisdom and information that it had to share came forward. And so it was telling me all about the planet and how there are lines of energy running through the planet. And some of you may know this already. It's not new. We, we um, In the West, we call them ley lines. In the East, in China, they call them dragon lines. And just like you in your energetic system, in your energetic field, you have channels that the energy runs through. There are channels where electromagnetic energy runs around the world in, a, in an organized fashion. And these are called ley lines. And... They're often thought to be lines of energy that, for example, animals can use to migrate, can use to find their breeding grounds. And uh, it's believed that ancient peoples traveled along these ley lines. 
And also there's evidence that um, that many ancient temples are actually built at points on the Earth's surface where multiple ley lines come together and cross one another. And so the... <laughs> The dragon was kind of telling me all about this and, you know, is an expert in um, in energy as it runs along the ley lines or the dragon lines and around the world. Now, where those ley lines meet and intersect are kind of power spots, right? So it's an accumulation of power and um, actually akin to what we call chakras within the human energy field. So these are vortices of energy and, um, again, places of transformation and shift and change and channeling energy. And so, of course, that's a great place to build a temple on a power spot. And so the ancients knew this information. And so some exact and and actually you know not only temples but just some very ancient places if we go back way in history to uh, some of those ancient monolithic sites like Stonehenge or Avebury in ancient Britain um there's actually Avebury is built on a spot where 12 different ley lines intersect so it's a very powerful vortex of energy and of course, people went to these temples because they were seeking transformation. They were seeking to bathe themselves in energy that would support shift and transformation and spiritual enlightenment and upliftment. And, um, and so it makes perfect sense to build your temples uh, and places where you congregate to do that at points of high energy on the Earth's surface. So it just was fascinating uh, for me to communicate with this <laughs> dragon spirit uh, just because it, it, that was its interest, that was its focus, that was its passion. It was the energy of the planet and the transformational capabilities of the energy of the planet and how we can use that to transform ourselves by consciously running it through our bodies and using it to help us heal ourselves. Now, after having that conversation with the dragon over the weekend, uh, it sort of piqued my interest. And so before I came to the show tonight, I did a little bit of Googling just to see what would come up. And, of course... Um, quite a lot actually it, um, one of the first things is that dragons are the myths about dragons are, are obviously very ancient because they have um, myths and legends on dragons pretty much in every country and every continent that you can think of so in ancient China, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, all of those eastern places, then the symbolism of the dragon and legends about the dragon are commonplace. And actually, I'll just share with you um, one of the ones that I thought was quite cute, and that was in Vietnam. And their word for dragon is uh, wrong or long. And in their mythology in their creation myth of how the world and people were formed they believed that people are descended from the union between a dragon and a fairy <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of cute and interesting not too sure how that uh, union manages to happen um, but um, you know I thought that was fascinating and of course, you know, we all know that the dragon is um, is something that uh, the Chinese hold in high esteem. It is the only mythological creature that is a part of their um, astrological calendar. The rest of them are real animals. Anyway, so, so in the East and ancient India, in fact, as well in the Vedic religion, 
there is, um, you know, records of dragons in ancient Persia. Uh, even in the Bible and ancient Jewish law, there is talk about dragons. And another one that I really liked was when I was reading about Australia and the aboriginals in Australia. And I'm just looking for the note that I made on that and I can't find it. So I'll try and see if I can remember it. But um, it was something like that they believed. Again, um, it was a creation myth of how the world was formed. And there were two dragons, I think. Ah, it's called the, um, the rainbow serpent. And the rainbow serpent, according to the Australian Aborigines, is a great energy current that travels the world from Ayers Rock, which in their language is called Uluru. And it links um, all of these energy vortices on the planet that I've been talking about. It connects them and it circles the earth and then returns back to uh, Uluru. And their mythology talks of two serpents, a female called Kanaya and her nephew, Liru, who is obviously the male serpent, and they meet at Uluru. And so these are these two great energy lines circling the earth, the female aspect and the male aspect. And of course, that sounds a little bit to me like yin and yang, which is that Chinese concept about male energy and female energy and how the planet is a balance between the male and female energy. You can even think of this scientifically in terms of different polarities of, of energy. And so this is the aboriginal concept is, is um, envisioning it like two giant energetic serpents, one with a female valence and one with a male valence. So, and, you know, like I said, so much came up when I Googled it. You know, there were so many stories from Greek mythology to European, German, Slavic, Nordic. Seems like every culture on Earth has mythology and belief in dragons. And oftentimes that mythology is connected to either the creation myth or to something to do with the energy of the earth. So I read in, in some cultures, the dragon is associated with water, with sometimes with drought, sometimes with water. And um, also there are myths about uh, sea serpents, of course. And also there's a connection with astronomy because um, in the Jewish astronomy um, it was talking about the constellation of Draco which of course is this sort of I guess dragon or lizard like constellation and um, I'll just re read it a little bit because again this is not something I knew before I googled it um, oh yes so in modern so it was talking about astrology and how um, when you get your astrological chart done, there's the North Node and the South Node. And it's got something to do with the um, intersection of the inclination of the orbit of a planet <laughs> um, that forms these two nodes. Well, apparently in ancient, ancient astronomy, those were actually called the dragon's head and the dragon's tail. And this is in Jewish mythology. And that's a little bit similar, isn't it, to the to the um, Australian mythology of the two dragons circling the earth. Anyway, I'm going to go to a break. And after the break, I will be taking your phone calls. So if you know anything about dragons, please phone me up and tell me. I'd be really interested to hear your stories and um, or any other mythological creature that you would like to talk about. I think it would be quite interesting. Now, of course, um, you can do that and we can chat some more about, about dragons and ancient mythological creatures. 
But also, like we always do on the show, you're welcome to phone me up and ask me a question. So if you're new to the show, I'm a professional intuitive, and so I'm happy for you to phone up. And if you have any issues in your life, you know, whether you're having mystical experiences that you want explained or whether you're just having some problems in a relationship or your career or with your health or anything like that, then you're welcome to phone up. everyone and welcome back to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and we are now taking your calls. So we had a kind of unusual subject today which was dragons <laughs> and a little bit about Kundalini and a little bit about the earth magnetic field and the different energy lines on the planet. You are welcome to phone up and have a conversation about that but don't let that stop you if you've got something else to talk about. You can um, call and ask any question you like about spirituality, about paranormal, mystical things, about intuition in general. And uh, if you've been having any interesting intuitive experiences... Um, phone me up if you are curious about what your intuitive abilities might be phone me up if you feel like you're blocked in some way phone me up I can help you with all of that and of course if you have a question to do with your career money health life purpose um, or as I said before, spiritual abilities, you can also phone us up. And um, the show producer, Corey, is taking your calls and he will patch you through to me. And of course, if not, you can send us an email. And the email address is info at drlesliephillips.com. So... I am not too sure what's happened to the producer, but um, I'm sure he'll be back soon and put some calls through to me. In the meantime, let's continue the conversation about dragons. So um, interestingly enough, I know another lady who is an energy healer who lives in the lower mainland. Her name is Heather. And um, she's actually quite well known. One of the things that she does, kind of talking of dragons, is she makes wands she makes wands out of crystals and um, different wood that she finds and feathers and so on anyway I, I went to her house uh, not so long ago and she said to me um, Leslie I have a dragon that lives in my garden <laughs> would you like to come and meet my dragon and um, I said sure and so she took me into her backyard, which is a fair-sized piece of land. And, um, you know, she'd built this um, sort of circular area where she had buried different crystals and rocks and so on. And she said, you know, this is a power spot, just like we were talking about before, you know, a place of high energy. And she said, I, you know, there's a dragon guardian of this power spot. So just in line with what we were talking about before, that, um, you know, dragons are mystical, magical creatures, kind of ethereal. So, so you know, when we watch the films like, um, you know, Game of Thrones and Harry Potter and we see these uh, portrayals of dragons, they're very real, aren't they? Very three-dimensional, solid, flesh-and-blood creatures my personal experience of them is that they are not solid, that they are um, they kind of exist in another dimension to our uh, th 3D world and so the interactions I've had with them and when I've seen them it's been just like when I see my spirit guide 
or when I talk to somebody who's in spirit, that it's more of an ethereal image. And the communication, of course, is not through language. It's more of a direct transmission of thoughts and information. So, those. Oh, oh, no, I guess we've got a call. Hold on a second. Hello. Hello, Dr. Leslie. Hi, Corey. How are you doing? Good. It's, it's nice to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> and let me just turn this down a little bit because I'm in the wrong... Hello. Hello. You still there? Yes. Good. Yeah, Dr. Leslie, we do have some questions that have come in. Good. And uh, let's see which one would be appropriate. Oh, well, here's here's one. Um And it's a little bit more of a median question than, than a, a psychic question or an intuitive question. It's from Sal, and she, she says, or he says, I'm not sure if it's a he or she, um, what was my mother-in-law trying to tell me just before she died? Okay, great. Thank you, Corey. We'll, we'll have a look at that. So let's just turn the phone off there. Well, it's a great question, isn't it? Um, so... We'll take a look at that. And for, for those of you who don't know me yet, I'll just explain that the way that I tune into information is I actually go into an altered state of consciousness called a trance. And it actually just involves me consciously altering some of my energy system. So it helps me tune out the physical world and tune into the spirit world. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to make a little adjustment so that I can see more clearly and tune into the spirit realm. And I'm going to look at this, la This I believe she's a lady, actually, um, and her mother-in-law that passed away. And, well, you know, the first thing that comes up is that in her transition from physical reality to non-physical reality that uh, the mother-in-law, she started to really tune into the spirit world. She started to see things and while she was still alive, as she was in that sort of transition phase from one to the other. And so I'm seeing actually what she was trying to tell you is what she was seeing. And she was just seeing just absolute breathtaking beauty of the spirit realm and she was seeing some of her guides and she was seeing she was starting to really uh, be absorbed into and sense the great enormity of love that exists when we tune away from physical reality into that spiritual reality so I'm just seeing that she was just so full of excitement and love and awe and wonder about where she was headed and that she wanted to tell you for a couple of reasons one so that you wouldn't worry about her because she knew she was going to a good place but two, so that she could share with you what she was seeing. It, it looks like it just really opened her eyes to um, this other realm of existence that she'd not paid too much attention to so far in her life. And she was just like overawed and she was wanting to point it out to you. Um, and um, I guess in one way, she didn't know that you couldn't see it too. Um, and so she was just that that that's really the the main thing that I'm seeing. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Well, I, you know, I'm just tuning into her now. I'm, I'm assuming she died a little while ago. And, uh, you know, she is. She's in a space of. Love and joy and just so she's just chuckling. It's like her heart is like this bubbling brook of love and um yeah it's just a message of love and joy and of course you know maybe i can link this back a little bit to today's theme and what we've been talking about 
in the realm of spirit, there's no space, there's no time. And there is love. You come from a place of love. You are love. You are light. You are energy. And the physical world, we start separating things out from the oneness. So just like we were talking about earlier, we have the yin and the yang, the plus and the minus, the, the, the polarities, the dualities that exist in this world. And uh, it's here on purpose because by by venturing forth into one extreme or another, that's how we learn, that's how we expand ourselves, that's how we expand um, existence. We're at the cutting edge of existence here on planet Earth. And so... Um, so, but the experience of that sometimes doesn't feel like love <laughs> because we've separated out all the opposites. So we've got the opposite of love here. We've got hate. We've got pain as well as joy and love. We've got fear. We've got all of those awful things. And so, um, you know, our life becomes a roller coaster, sort of traversing our way through those polarities. And so, of course, you know, to somebody who's transitioning back to the non-physical, oh, it's such a release and such a relief to go home to the place of pure love. And that's what uh, Sal's mother-in-law was experiencing and conveying. So I think that um, I might take a quick break now because we've got two minutes before we normally would take a break, take it a bit early. And then uh, again after the break, please give us a call. I know I've been away for two weeks, but I'm back now and I'm raring to go and I'm raring to talk to you. So Hello. Hello, Dr. Leslie. I have another question for you that came in by email. Yes. And the question has a little bit to do, um, not quite with the dragons, but along the animal line. And it's from Veronica. And Veronica uh, writes, I want to be an animal communicator, yet my skills seem to center around feelings and emotions, and I'm extremely sensitive to atmosphere rather than auditory or visual messages. So I question my aptitude. Do you see a future for me in this? Okay, that's a great question. Thank you, Corey. Um, let's take a look for Veronica at her desire to communicate with the animals. I'm just going into my trance again. Okay, so let's look at Veronica wanting to be an animal communicator. So there's a lot of information that we can convey to you here, Veronica. And of course, you, the first thing you say is that you seem to tune in more to feelings and emotions. And that is an intuitive ability called clairsentience or clear feeling. And oddly enough, the primary purpose of that is for body-spirit communication so that you, the spiritual being, can stay in touch with how your body, uh, the body that it's created to um, experience its physical existence through, you can stay tuned in to um, how it's responding to the situations that you're putting it through. But it can also be used to tune in to how other people are feeling, how other bodies are feeling. And that could be the body of another human being, or it could be the... Um, you know, an animal. Animals have, um, you know, feelings and emotions too. So, but, you know, people who have clairsentience, which actually is all of us, but, but, but those who have a particular aptitude for using it for their intuitive purposes, there are several challenges associated with it. If you don't know how to control it and... Um, consciously operate from it because a lot of people and sometimes they're, they're referred to as empaths who have this ability have trouble discerning one signal from another 
and get overwhelmed by the whole sea of emotional signals that are around them, especially in crowds and in, in supermarkets. So so I, I'm seeing that, you know, I'll validate that I'm seeing that you you do have that ability and that it is um, kind of active, but also there's this element of some of the challenges associated with it. Now, you say that you're not so much auditory and you're not so much visual, as far as you can tell, because, of course, you probably could be trained to um, use your other abilities like your clairvoyance and clairaudience. There's something that I do is I train people how to do that. And um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's not necessarily an insurmountable barrier. But let's just take a look. I'm actually seeing, now that I, I look at your energy, there's another ability that you didn't mention, but it's showing up as being one that is... Um, potential for you is it's called clear cognizance and it's knowing so it's ability to just simply know something without having to figure it out in your intellectual mind so the clear sentience and the clear cognizance look fairly powerful and strong in your system but of course you know how animals communicate veronica is predominantly through actually a different intuitive ability than we've mentioned so far and it's called telepathy and telepathy is non-verbal communication um, across distances and there's actually two forms of it one is broadband and one is narrowband so the broadband somebody like me who's uh, on a radio show I'm using broadband, and what that does is it allows me to communicate with large groups of people so that, as well as speaking, I can be sending telepathic communications at the same time, and it will reach people at the level that they can um, accept the information. So it helps, you, it helps you talk to more than one person on their level. The, what the narrowband is one-on-one -on -one communication. So I'm going to take a look at telepathy in terms of you um, as an animal communicator. And, and of course, with, I'm seeing that, you know, there's, obviously there's the, the receiving aspect and the sending aspect. And I'm seeing that the, the the sending aspect is something that's sort of like not even in your consciousness and hasn't even occurred to you that you could do it. But the receiving aspect, I'm seeing that, that you are kind of doing that on a unconscious level, let's say. But it looks like to me like sometimes when you're in the company of, you know, furry creatures, <laughs> two and four legged friends that... Um, you know, that, that, that they are actively communicating telepathically and that some of it is getting through. I'm seeing that the main barrier is it's really, it's, it's, it's really an awareness thing with you, actually, an education thing. Um, you know, that you, you, um, you know how to communicate in a certain way. You're aware of certain... Um, ways of communicating intuitively and it just looks like the telepathic one is something that you haven't really gone into um, now let me see if I can see anything else about it yeah so of course the communication center is in the throat and that is we were talking earlier in the show about these energy vortices we call them chakras um sometimes there's one in the throat it's responsible for many different facets of communication including this telepathic one and one of the things i am seeing is that there's um something going on there in your fifth chakra that is um impeding your ability to um be tuning in to some of the signals coming to you so let me just see 
if I can get a clue about what that is to do with. What's interesting, well, I was just seeing some images that remind me a little bit of what I was saying about the clairsentience earlier and about this sort of sense of overwhelm because I'm seeing um, images of you as a kid and um, I don't have you on the other end of the phone so you can't validate this, but it's almost as if maybe you um, got taken to football matches or something like that. You know where, it's, where there's an enormous crowd of people and and it's very noisy and there's a lot of communication going on and it looks like um it, it that hit you in the communication center as well and it's sort of like too many different frequencies coming at me at the same time and i need to turn this off uh because i can't cope with it so it looks like that happened to you when you were a kid so I sort of rambled around a few different pieces of information for you, Veronica. But, you know, I, I'm seeing that you do have the potential to be an animal communicator. And it's really a case of a little bit of education and perhaps finding a mentor who is knowledgeable enough that they can, um, you know, see your energy system and what's working and what's blocked and give you some tuition in how to consciously go about doing this. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there and we'll find out whether we have another caller. And uh, once again, you know, we've been talking about Kundalini energy, the earth, and we've been talking about dragons, but you don't let that limit you. You can, you can call us to talk about anything. Hello. Hello, Dr. Leslie. Hi. Corey here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have a question from Jay, Dr. Leslie, and the question is, does my spiritual and or career path have something to do with plants? Did you say Jay or Jade? Oh, he's gone. Okay. Jay or Jade. Spiritual path and plants. Okay. Well, that's kind of earthy in in a way, isn't it? So so I'm going to tune into Jay's energy. And we'll take a look. So, I mean, the short answer is yes. <laughs> I'm seeing you have an enormous affinity for the plant realm. And that you have a lot of innate wisdom and knowledge about the plant realm. You know... Um, in my world view, we don't just come here once, we come here many times. And it looks like you're a person who's accumulated a lot of knowledge and information about plants and energy medicine, um, specifically relating to plants. So the different energy frequencies that different herbs and plants imbue <laughs> And how they can be used to assist people in healing. So, for example, if you were wanting to be a herbalist, I would say that's a very good career path for you. Because I think that you would take to it, um, you know, like a, um, like a fish takes to water. That, um, because you, you know it already. It wouldn't be something that you would be learning, um, you know, for the first time. You'd just be remembering what you already knew. So anything like herbalism, aromatherapy, um, anything like, um, you know, the bark flower remedies, um, homeopathy, any of those things that to do with um, using the frequency of a plant to impact the frequency in the human body as a way of creating healing is something that you would be good at. Now, I'm going to follow on a little bit from the last question too because there's a form of telepathic communication that takes place between plants as well. And uh, and actually, there's been scientific experimentation that's shown uh, this. 
don't have time to go into it, but and I can't remember the name of the researchers, but um, you know, people have just you know, it, for example, had two plants in completely separate rooms and gone in to one plant, six people completely benign with one person with a pair of scissors that cuts a leaf off and then when the same people go into the other room where the other plant is the plant that's connected to elect- electrodes is absolutely screaming when the person who had the scissors comes in so <laughs> anyway I, d- I diverge off the subject I wanted to talk about plant communication and so let me look um, at this aspect for you as well because You know, it's one thing to learn a system, you know, that says rosemary's good for uh, anti-inflammatory, star anise is good to shift catarrh and mucus, or you know, that's that's one thing you learn. You learn, you know, the the system and the knowledge. But another thing is to be able to, in the moment, tune in to the frequency of the plant that is in front of you and I'm seeing that you are quite capable of not only doing the former but also doing the latter so you know going on a a walk on a mountainside and just being able to tune into the frequencies of the different plants you know on one level it might be to choose which particular plant to harvest on another level it's just like well okay um, if you put you in a in a in a greenhouse full of different plants from all around the world, and you know, and and gave you a person who um, had something wrong with them, and said, "Okay, what plant should we use?" I believe that you have the ability, with you know, some practice and some training, to really be able to intuit um, in the moment from the living um, plants around you what a particular plant would be good at and partly it's just it's tuning into the frequency and of the plant and you know, to some degree communicating with it as well so so i hope that really validates jay that um that yes working with plants is part of your life purpose and you know just in general for any of you listening if you have an interest in something it's not by accident if you have a passion for something, it's not by accident. If you are drawn to something and um, it it excites you, well, that's a clue that that is something that you should be following. You know, we all have an internal guidance system within us. One simple term for it is your intuition, and there are many types of intuition as we've been discussing, and one of them is called uh, affinity. And it's sort of that feeling in your heart, you know, when you feel really passionate about something or somebody, you know, where there's a resonance, where there's a a matching energy, where you magnetize towards something or it towards you. That's your internal guidance system kicking in and giving you, um, you know, go in this direction. So I think that, Jay, you knew already, didn't you, that that was part of your life purpose. You just wanted it validated by somebody else. Okay, we're coming to the end of the show. So you've been listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And I, of course, I'm Dr. Leslie. (laughs) And I'm your host, and I'm here every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. And we didn't get any callers tonight. And it may be I've been away for the last two weeks in Europe um, and so I hope we can get back in the swing, you know, next week, give us a call. And in the meantime, if there's a subject that you'd really like me to talk about, email me, email me, email me at info at drlesliephillips.com. I'll, I'll talk about anything of a, of, of a spiritual nature. And, um, yeah. And if you've got a burning question about your own life, you can phone in and ask me next week. It's been lovely being back in the studio and talking to you all about dragons and things. And, um, you know, I'm sad to go, but I have to go. because. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at drleslie.com. 
P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S dot com. That's Dr. Leslie Phillips dot com, where you can ask questions or send her an email. And there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again.